all in this video we will see how to simulate call pitch oscillator using LT spy simulation tool so we all know call pitch oscillator is a linear type of oscillator which provides sinusoidal output frequency right so the base of this oscillator is LC tank circuit here which has two capacitors and the two capacitors are actually connected in series and uh, the midpoint of these capacitors is connected to the ground uh, which means it is uh, connected to the collector, uh, emitter terminal right so <clears throat> This particular uh, uh, call pitch oscillator has, uh, as we said, LC tank circuit, or it is also called a resonance circuit, uh, which also has 5 milli Henry of inductor with it. Okay, so oscillator basically we know is a positive feedback circuit, right? Which also involves uh, having active components like a uh, MOSFET, BJT or uh, an op amp. So here we have 2N222 NPN transistor which is there to which we have an inductor to uh, VCC. VCC is 12 volts DC here and there is also a biasing circuit which biases the uh, transistor using um, R2 and R3. So this actually need not be an exact voltage divider. It actually halves the voltage, right? As R2 and R3 are equal. So R2 uh, can be greater than R3 to have a lower voltage. So that you can adjust in the circuit. And then we have an inductor from uh, the supply to the collector of this particular BJT where this inductor uh, allows the DC and it blocks the AC to uh, uh, where uh, when the feedback is provided it doesn't allow the AC to be passing to the supply so and then we can see here the, the output of this particular tank circuit is fed back to the collector which is taken out using a uh, uh, capacitor here. This is again a DC blocking capacitor and here again it's a DC blocking capacitor here. So these are all the components, right? So how does a call pit oscillator work? Call pit oscillator works by charging of these two capacitors. So whenever you give supply, you can see here we have supply 12 volts, you can also give 9 volts here. Uh, so um, whenever uh, you provide supply these two capacitors get charged and <clears throat> the charge um, is uh, passed through the inductor where inductor gets charged as well so this particular uh, circuit output is fed back to the collector where we can see the oscillations here okay so this is how uh, the call pit oscillator work when there is a uh, input provided. Now, for this particular oscillator, the frequency output is very important, right? At what frequency are we going to get the output? So, the frequency is determined by uh, the formula 1 pi 2 pi uh, square root of L into C. What is L here is nothing but uh, the L which is there in the tank circuit. C is the equivalent of uh, these two capacitors C4 and C5. So C4, C5 are in series if you see here and uh, they are actually grounded at uh, uh, the common point. So when a capacitor is in series, the equivalent capacitance is C4 into C5 by C4 plus C5, right? That is the equivalent. So when we do um, this particular calculation, we see that approximately we should see around 23 kilohertz of frequency output. Where does we see the output? We see the output at uh, uh, the <coughs> 
other side of this uh, uh, DC blocking capacitor. And we are just trying to run the simulation with a stop time uh, uh, transient analysis with uh, one second of time. And we will see what is the output of this particular circuit. Now, when we run this, we know uh, there will be a probe which need to be inserted at the output of this capacitor, right? So, when we insert the probe, you can see it generates a sinusoidal wave. We, we already explained, right? Colpit oscillator is a linear oscillator which generates um, a sinusoidal output at a specific frequency. Now, we have simulated the... Uh, <coughs> waveform with the time up to one second so you can see the output now to see uh, the frequent uh, the um, sinusoidal waveform just try to um, zoom in a particular section and you can see here you can see the sine wave that is generated so to change this particular value you can adjust the components of this particular oscillator and have a pure uh, sine wave that is generated so <coughs> if you expand a little uh, this is how it looks so this can be adjusted by changing the um, charging components uh, that are basically the tank circuit okay the lnc components uh, and uh, and lnc also changes uh, the frequency output of this particular circuit. Now, if we see here, uh, this uh, uh, is around 408.6274 and uh, this is around 408.6619. Uh, um, so, if we uh, calculate the time period difference and invert it, you <coughs> get output frequency of approximately uh, 23 kilohertz. So now one more important point here to remember is whenever we are designing the culprits oscillator um, the, the tank circuit is very very important. So these uh, uh, tank circuit when you uh, select properly you get the proper output and this inductor <coughs> on the collector is also uh, playing a crucial role here where these DC blocking caps you can use as per your uh, um, requirement <laughs> and uh, um, the sinusoidal output we can see here and as we already mentioned uh, the DC voltage of this culprit oscillator can be adjusted uh, accordingly to provide the output and this culprit oscillator can also be realized uh, using a MOSFET uh, using a BJT which we used here uh, NPN uh, bipolar junction transistor and it can also be realized using an operational amplifier so in another video we will see how to design a culprit oscillator with um, a MOSFET and the operational amplifier. Hope um, we gave a glimpse of how culprit oscillator work and uh, how to simulate this. <coughs> please post if you have any questions. Please let us know if you have already simulated with the different uh, frequencies. Uh, you can post your uh, snapshot of your circuit in the comments. Thank you.